It's the GMR podcast. It's the tenth podcast, and it just goes to show that if you say things like "we could use a theme song," somebody will turn up with one. That's right. Uh, what do you think? Give us some feedback. Yeah, that was provided by JJ Styles. Thank you. Put your comments on wherever the heck you're listening this to, on. Yeah, whether it be iTunes or YouTube. So we're back once again. I'm Marty Katoa. I'm Gene Mott. And it's the 10th episode of the GMR podcast, which stands for Gene, Marty, and Ray. And Ray was going to be here, said the buses run every half hour on Grant, but then as it inched closer to 5 o'clock, I realized something else came up. So maybe he'll be with us next time. And, of course, it's eight weeks to Comic-Con. Took the words right out of my mouth, sir. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. That really means it's it's a time to plan for real. It's coming up. Yeah. Uh, coming up really fast, actually. Uh, that'll be here before we realize it. Steve-O's pretty geared up. He's trying to work full-time. Oh, really? Get so his he's band still... together. Hmm. He, wants to, he wants to drive us up there. All right. So we we were talking like every year we uh, things get a little better we have a we have a better Comic Con experience, and you were we were saying someday we'll be on a panel there, and this year you are going to be on a panel. Yeah, yeah, it already happened. So Crazy. don't know the exact times yet, but we know it's it been accepted. Yes, it. They still haven't printed out the. Not a that I know of. Copy no. of uh, the program. No, I should probably stop by the comic book shop and see if see if it's out. Cause if it's out anywhere, you should they're call gonna Charlie. Have yeah, he would know, right? I should just drop in there. It's about time. Uh, yes, uh, John the Alien interviews has been accepted into the Phoenix Comic Con Film Festival. So and it's probably cool. official by now. It's probably on their website, yeah. right? I would hope so. That's the uh, show that Cliff and I wrote a few years ago, and now the show is finally out. Who is John dot com? Well, how do you spell that? Z H O N. Who produced that? Uh, that was that was Eric Schumacher and Robert Linden, the stars yeah. of the program. What's the name of their production company? Do you know? Uh, Roberic Media. Ah. Uh. Or Rob Eric. I call it's, it Rob Eric. It's cool that you guys uh, were able to write something and didn't have to worry about all the, let's, I'm the one that's going to have to get all these cameras and people together in one time and, and film all this. And It was a different experience. It's, it's a lot easier. Yeah. You say, here's the script. Now you go make it. <laughs> that's what I wish we could have done with the Bible movie. Mm. But, yeah, that, that's been butchered. We could probably still do something with that someday, somehow. The script still exists. A so. form of the script still exists. And it could be definitely, you know, it wouldn't be that hard to, to pump it up, but it'll never be the original masterpiece that me and F Fred Janice and I wrote. Uh, does any of that footage exist? None of that footage. I'm sure it exists somewhere. If it hasn't been, like, used, the tapes haven't been uh, destroyed or recorded over, but... Well, not too much recording over a tapes anymore, so... No. But, no, those tapes were lost years and years ago. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, most of it was horrible. <laughs> there were some good scenes. We we did shoot Adam and Eve, the whole uh, Garden of Eden scene out at Sabino Canyon. That turned out pretty well. But when you're when you're dealing with people who aren't real actors, you know, who aren't being paid... Or who aren't actors at all, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. And just giving them the lines, and they're just like, hey, read this stuff. <laughs> like, like the Adam and Eve stuff, they actually uh, rehearsed that, you know what I mean? Really? And then we shot, like, the Noah's Ark scene in Studio B. I think it was Studio B against the, cr against the, the blue wall. And we did a bunch of chroma, so it looked like we had a crowd. We had Shane Eden. I don't know if we had the... I doubt we had the Prophet Alpha, but we may have. We were just looking for people to walk through, you know, and look like... I think I remember that. That time period. 
it was chromed like eight or nine times to really yeah. make it look like a crowd and then Stockelberg would be telling everybody where they needed to stand. That's right. It was directed by Glenn Stockelberg. Those that's that's really when the whole thing just fell apart. <laughs> Dealing with Glenn Stockelberg, it just seemed like it wasn't worth it, you know? So you got about half of it shot? Nah, it's let's see, what did we shoot? We shot uh Cain and Abel, we shot that. I don't, I'd have to look at the script. I don't even know. I have the script somewhere if it hasn't been stolen. N none of the Star Trek stuff ever got shot, right? Oh, the Sodom and Gomorrah? No, no, that was, that was classic stuff, though. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Spock, or, or the, the angels were, were uh, it was Spock and I forget who else. Maybe Kirk. Mm-hmm. And they went down, yeah, to find, uh, they had, like, what the hell was it? They had a device, because everybody, everybody was blinded. They were all outside of Lot's house wanting to fuck Lot, right? Send out, they, and then he was going to push out his young daughters, right? Because that would have been less of a sin. But they were like, no, we want you, Lot. <laughs> and then so the angels went out, you know, they, no, they wanted the angels. They wanted the angels who had just arrived. And then the angels like uh, blinded everybody. So you know, set your set set the fucking uh, tricorder to whatever tricorder. I think it was a tricorder. Well, they they were, that's how they measured the loose sphincters. Many loose sphincters in this town, Captain. <laughs> it was it was pretty good. We should do something with make an animated thing. Do out of a it. have a live reading on the podcast. Or yeah, something. yeah, something like that. <laughs> And then find somebody to animate it, you know? Yeah, there you go. There you go. That'd be fucking funny. Let's do a flash animation of it. That'd be cool, yeah. Maybe we would do that one of these days. When we have a week, when we have a, absolutely nothing better to do, or maybe that would be the best week ever. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. Something should be done with it. It should be uh, tacked down for permanently for, for the masses somehow. Mm -hmm. All 31 of you. Yeah, and growing. And growing, it's, it's still our power grows. 31 on the uh, iTunes, but it's in 30 on YouTube. So. And we've only been on iTunes, what, a week? Two weeks. Two yeah. weeks. And I doubt it's the same 30 people. No, that doesn't make sense. Unless they want to hear it on both uh, channels. It, it, it doesn't sound different. How many hits did we have on iTunes or on uh, YouTube for that show? YouTube, the the show was watched like about eight times, something like mm. that. And then they probably realized, hey, we get to listen to this on iTunes. Yeah, like and a real podcast. <laughs> so that's good. Let's see. Already looking at my notes. We're only ten minutes in. Good Lord, I thought. Are we ten minutes? Oh yeah, yeah. There is a minute counter down there. You never noticed that? I always thought it was uh, like beats per second or something. Beats per second, and then yeah, because you can change it. Yeah. Uh, we are in the key of C. And we're in the key of C. Wow. Do we want to be in the key of C? I guess that's just what it is. That's the default, eh? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Let's see, I have some more bus adventures. Bus adventure time. We need theme music for all these like different <laughs> segments. Uh oh. Man. Now we're gonna, we're gonna end up with all that. Huh? We're gonna get more music. <laughs> Make us bus theme music. Yeah, Gene's bus adventures. Gene's riding the bus. Gene's riding the bus. What's gonna happen this week? Who knows? What's what's, what's going I don't know, like Howard Stern, he, he's got like any little thing they say, this guy, Mikey something, makes, makes a theme song. And oh, yeah. And most of them are about having anal sex with uh, Robin. <laughs> but still, Howard don't want to talk about that. And what, mm -hmm. Yeah, hard to believe I'm actually singing a band, but yeah. Okay. Let's see, I went to Steve-O's, 
And he wasn't. I don't know if this was the time he was there. No, it wasn't the time. It was the time he was there. And I went back home. I was on the way back home. I was down at the Ronstadt. And this girl with a mustache asked me for a cigarette. <laughs> right? This really, she had a mustache and she just, I don't know. Anyway, and then uh, so, I, so I'm like rolling her a cigarette, right? Because uh, what the hell? And I'm not making eye contact with her in any of this time because I, you know, I don't want to be talking to anybody. I made the mistake of sitting somewhere where people walk by smoking a cigarette. First of all, when I should have been sitting up against the wall on the side, like they got this, you know, they're fixing the Ronstadt over the side where the Martin Luther King building is and that shit. It was all like torn up because they're like uh, making a whole new Ronstadt. Anyway, and then she tells me she's like a cute 26-year-old girl, right? And, you know, like like this is something special for me, Give you know, doing a, rolling a girl for a, a cigarette for rolling a girl for a cigarette. What the hell is that, man? <laughs> And then she fucking started, like, uh, doing this to my beard. What would you call this? I was trying to figure out. Groping? Fondling? Mm -hmm. What did I write down here? Played with. Played with my beard. I'm like, what the? And then she just went away because I, I made no eye contact with her after the, the initial eye contact. And I saw the mustache, and I was just like, okay. <laughs> fucking weirdo. And that's my story, and that took three minutes. Wow. I'm way too conscious of this shit. <laughs> Let's talk about Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Wow. It just seems like, no, it does not seem like yesterday, but in a way it does, in a way it doesn't, that uh, that came out. And uh, I worked at the movie theater when they were showing that thing. Mm. The the line was wrapped around the building when that shit came out. Do you remember it? Oh, yeah. I was working the concession line when that came out. It's constantly slinging popcorn all day. You know, that line was just that never-ending. We had that thing on, like, four or five screens, which was un unheard of then. It was the first movie in DTS. What is that? Digital theater system. Mm. When they started putting the sound of movies onto, a like, a CD uh, instead of it just being attached to the part of the film. Yeah, that was a big deal when that came out. I just rewatched it again yesterday for because the new movie's coming out, and I realized I'd totally forgotten like the entire plot line or why any of this happened, and now I want to see Jurassic Park 2. Ah. Uh. Yeah, two and three, I just, uh, they're not as interesting as the first one. They're okay. I just want to know how it continues. Like, I'm assuming there's a continual plot line. Kind of. They're, ki they're kind of like standalone in a way. It's not what you would hope for. At least not, not the, what I had hoped for. That Godzilla movie with Matthew Broderick felt like another Jurassic Park movie. Hmm. And I've only seen that once. That's not that's not a very good movie. But they make Godzilla into these raptor type looking things. Yeah, that that just made no sense. Let's breed raptors. Yeah, why not? All right, let's get a couple of Tyrannosaurus Rexes out there. I want I want everything out there. Well, they didn't have everything. They just had like a couple of really dangerous ones, right? And 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 it isn't like they had, like, hundreds of dangerous ones, because obviously there were probably hundreds, and they, but I guess they, they took what they could get, right? They even had ones that never existed in the first place, apparently. Cause, uh, Is that right? They're saying, what, the Brontosaurus never existed? Or... What do you mean it never existed? Yeah, they were saying that they were putting the bones together wrong all these ah, years or something. That's crazy. Which makes me think, like, this guy in the beginning of the movie... Oh, I forget his name, Sam something, Sam... Oh, Sam Neal? Sam Neal. He's, like, all explaining how these things are uh, hunted and shit, right? And, like, how would you have any idea? Well, right? that's your exposition. Yeah, yeah. Well, then it turns <laughs> out, you know, he was right. Yeah. And the whole thing is, is basically, 
about him him and his girlfriend Laura Dern having kids, right? Yeah. And he wasn't able he didn't want to have kids. He didn't like kids and then he was forced into the situation where he had to be with these kids and be like their father because they didn't have anybody else cuz they were trapped in the in the fucking uh Jurassic Park. All because of of fucking Newman. Yeah. What an asshole. He was stealing Spoiler alert, in case you're going to see it in 3D. Yeah. But you should have seen it 20 years ago. <laughs> At Century Park. And I'm sure you did. He's like stealing uh, embryos. Yeah, and that is, he just like drops one out there or something. Oh, he totally lost his... Yeah, he, he quickly lost his shit. And I guess that's what creates, you know, whatever's in part two and three. Oh yeah, because those somebody found must have found. I don't know. I haven't seen those in a long time. Either. I don't. I have no memory of it. I'm sure I saw it. I'm sure I watched it on video. It's like one of those movies that they made thousands and like so many of them. Like, you know, you'd see like uh, what five or six of them at Bookman's. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Because uh, they made so many copies, like Star Wars: The Special Edition. Yeah. I remember seeing bootleg VHS copies of it when it first came out. It was so popular. And then, let's see. This isn't a really good recap. But uh, then the girl was like, the little girl, the guy's uh, granddaughter was a hacker. And she was able to bring everything back online. But by this point, you know, the raptors were everywhere. And it's just crazy. Yep. Shit but it did out. look like it would transfer good, well to 3D because yeah. the entire thing was obviously shot on like blue screen or whatever you call it, green screen. Or I don't think they had green screen technology back then. Not yeah, but that was the most impressive, uh, like CG we had seen. Yeah, all of a sudden you're seeing a big giant dinosaur walking around. We got to see the sneak preview of that movie a couple of days before it came out because we worked there, and it's like everybody's just like, wow. Especially when it ate that guy sitting on the toilet. Oh, yeah. The crowd was going ape shit. That's the point where kids would run out of the theater screaming, and it would happen over and over again. So hopefully people working Jurassic Park in the theaters now will get to experience that same thing of people taking their kids that are way too young to this dinosaur movie, and then the kid runs out screaming bloody oh, yeah, murder, and the parents dinosaurs. drag him back in. You ever see, like, I don't know, like, uh, I imagine kids kids get terrified when they see, like, a real life-sized dinosaur walking around. If you were real little. Because yeah. there's, there's, there's no Barney anymore. Yeah, they were expecting Barney, yeah. <laughs> That's right, Barney the dinosaur. And the, the new Alice in Chains album that comes out in two months is called The Devil Put Dinosaurs Here. It's just everybody's in the dinosaur uh, mode. Because you know how the heavy religious people are claiming that, you know, See, that's here's all the fake. twist. They use frog DNA to uh, to fill in the gaps of the DNA of the dinosaurs. Yeah, the dinosaurs Even, are just birds, right? They're, yeah, and why would they use frogs? Why wouldn't they use Why wouldn't they use uh, bird DNA or something? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Because they didn't really realize they were birds back then. That was like speculation. Yeah, yeah. That was like one of the premises of the movie. That they were warm-blooded and all that. So you're saying that the brontosaurus never existed. Well, somebody, I was somebody raised, was saying that. Somebody was saying that. Anyway, so I'd really like to see that movie in 3D. I think that would kick ass, man. And then the Flintstones came out the year after. It's this whole prehistoric oh. thing. And, well, well, we won't talk about that. The Flintstones. Maybe, maybe next week. I I. If I had a copy of it, I'd watch it. I try. I was gonna review uh, Shrek Two, oh, but it was yeah. just so so fucking horrible. Not not a good movie. I mean, I figured it would have some sort of entertainment, but and I guess there were moments where it was like the little cat was interesting. Hmm. Puss in Boots. Enough to warrant its own movie. Which yeah. I've also never seen. But the whole no no, and I doubt I ever will. I almost, I was thinking about Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but then I saw Jurassic Park and I was like, I was like, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> I wish I had the Evil Dead because I'd like to see the Evil Dead and compare it to the, 
I want to see the new one. Oh, you, the new one. Are you going to go see the new one? Uh, probably not. No? I'll just wait for video. Think it'll be that quick? No, just about everything is nowadays, it seems like. You wait three or four months and you can get the get the disc. Anyway, I'm looking forward to that. It looks like it's... Uh, yeah, it could be interesting. A good reboot. That comes out next week. Okay. Remember that Marvel Treasury Edition? Oh, Obviously yeah, you do, yeah. That you hooked me up with last week? Mm-hmm. You know, that, that you could subscribe to that back then. Yeah, yeah. It was like nine fifty for four issues. Like they were publishing four a year or something. I could afford that. I know. Doesn't it make you wish you'd have uh, realized that and hooked up on that real early on, like before the Kiss episodes and mm -hmm. issues? And Of course, you, you probably weren't even... You were like... Real little yeah. when the Kiss issues came out. At some point, I was subscribing because I was like Marvel, and they'd send you books wrapped in a brown paper bag type thing. Because I was like in the fifth grade, I remember bringing the Kiss book to school to show off everybody. Wow, look how cool I am! I have this Kiss book, the one with the with the blood in it. Yeah, yeah. Featured in Comic Book Men. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was I must have been stupid not to sub subscribe to that. I was just getting tired of not finding the books at the store, so I saved up a few dollars and started subscribing. This is when comics were still 75 cents a piece, and I thought that was expensive because I was used to paying 65 cents. Well, yeah, back when a, back when a dollar was, you, you could get a lot more for a dollar. Yeah. You get like a, a half gallon of milk for a dollar, pack of cigarettes. It was a long time ago, Marty. Makes us sound old. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I'm, let's see. Are there books? And I can, there must have been, I don't know. I don't know what that note says. I can't read that. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right, man. Remember when you used to say man all the I'm time? I'm saying man a lot. We just watched uh, another chunk. That was probably the end of that segment, right? Almost, you know. There's still like a few more minutes left on it because the sun was just about to come up. There's so another hour to that one. Another hour. What did we do when the sun came up? I don't know. That's. Hmm. We still sat there. We must have, yeah, because nobody else would. Yeah, Marty used to say, "Man," like he was like he was uh, in Cheech and Chong. He's like, "Yeah, man, I just saw that Molly Crew show, man. I love that shit, man." Maybe a little different than that. Not much. And I'm looking forward to episode 20 when we get to episode 20. Yeah. Still got a little ways to go. We're barely on four. So. We're watching back old, old shows that we did, in case you're wondering what we're talking about. They're three hours long apiece, so it, it takes a little while to sit through them. We're, we're about halfway through the fourth one. Yeah, there, there are 69 episodes, so it takes a little while. Hey. Let me ask you, if we, I don't think I've ever spent my birthday with Cliff and Ray. Mm. What do you think? I don't or think that's either one. Yeah. Yeah, Ray might have been, he never really came down to the new show, Random Access, Not Instant a Access. A few times, you know, probably but about it, ten times. But I so. doubt, yeah, this will be the first birthday I ever spent with those guys. And I'm sure we'll see Paul up there. I would think so, yeah. If he doesn't go up there with us. If Steve-O gets his big old band together. Mm-hmm. Is, is Mark going? Mark is planning on going, yeah. Two, two months. Two months, eight weeks. That's, that's less than two months. Yeah. This isn't every 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 month isn't February. No, we're, we're long done with February. I wish every month were like February. <laughs> then we'd have an extra month. I'd kick ass. Yeah, why don't they just do that? Someday. Someday they'll do that. Because it's all locked in ancient traditions and all this <laughs> shit. Leap year. Oh, don't get me started on leap years. Oh, that makes that just ruins my... I hate every four years. One extra day. <laughs> One extra day. What a pain in the ass. Where's that extra day coming from? Well, see, I always figured it when I, like, added it up. I always just put, like, a quarter, you know, what, 364 days, point, how many days a year are there? 
365. Okay, we'll see. So I'd go 365, you know. Why don't they just throw in that quarter day? Yeah, why don't we have a quarter day? That would take care of daylight savings time. Yeah. I noticed that. that, uh, So what if it's dark out at 5 in the afternoon? It it, it doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. Who cares? It's all numbers and counting. Somebody at some point, somebody said, "We're going to start counting right now," and then the clock started. So, well, yeah, I had a headache for three days. That mm. was pretty fun. Kind of had a small headache this morning, but uh, Steve-O gave me some Tylenol, and I took that this morning. That'll so do it. That helped. Okay. Oh yeah, with that new segment. That was a, that movie. Re- those were movie reviews. Oh yeah, you're gonna do uh, for a long time. That's gonna be a new segment. I'm movie reviews of movies that are 20 years old or something wasn't that you should have seen by now. Wasn't there another movie that you were gonna hype oh. up? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right, Marty. I'd, I'd uh, space that out. Yeah, this movie is called Nemesis with Oscar Grunier. Oh, Grunier. Grunier. Uh, Oliver Grunier, the uh, Oliver Grun- action star. In the future, it pays to be more than human. Star of Angel Town. Nemesis, a provocative, sleek thriller, says Kevin Thomas of the L.A. Times. I thought it was kind of a Terminator meets Robocop meets Blade Runner type thing. Meets The Room. Mm. That's what I think, dude. A weird movie. They show that at the loft about every six months. (laughs) It's a big audience participation thing, though. The energetic, hard-boiled nemesis action sci-fi film with some big budget virtues is is the first feature to bring full-fledged cyberpunk to the theater screens. Oh, this is before steampunk. This is cyberpunk. Remember cyberpunk? That that was Henry Sheehan of The Hollywood Reporter. That's what was his review of this. Mm -hmm. Now, this was for 1993 theatrical release. Hey, more... Fitting with the theme of oh, it had a 20 years ago. It had a theatrical release. Okay. Oh, I'm sure it did. Probably played about two or three screens. Just to qualify. Mm-hmm. But what I have here is a, well, what do you call this? Mark? That's a screener copy. A screener copy. And this this is a, these people have, a, it's a multi-million dollar media blitz that delivers. This is trying to, the action set pieces, here's another review by Harry Sheenan. Sheenan, of course. I think that's Sheehan, Sheehan. The action set pieces are blistering, often clever displays of firepower. <laughs> often clever displays of firepower. Here, why don't you, why don't you It's tell often me? clever. Why don't you read this shit? Here, I don't want to read all that. Read some of it. That's just saying, you know. Give a synopsis of what that means, Tim. That's just saying, please buy a bunch of tapes of this movie and rent it in your store. Because it's got a lot of. It's got all this money poured into it. Yeah, and and people know about it. It's coming out. Millions and millions of people. I don't know about you, but I never saw an ad for this movie on NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox, or MTV. I don't remember this movie at at all. At all. Trailered for over eight months. I I don't remember any of that. But if they say that's what happened. Back in 93, and you were working back in... Back in '93, you were working in the in the, at a movie theater. Yeah, you we, would have thought you'd have caught the. We nemesis. didn't show this one. No, trailer. This is more like direct to the movie channel. Hey, Los Angeles 2027. So it's still, it's still, still it's plausible. Future. It's plausible. We just haven't gotten there yet. It has uh, Brian James from Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. And, of course, Tim Thomerson from Air America and Trancers. Of course. And everyone knows who Tim Thomerson is. <laughs> Once you see him, you will. I'm really selling this movie. I'm really looking forward to it. And here's the kicker. Back then, if you owned a video store, you could buy this for the low, low price of $94.95. Or you could get a profit pack for a four pack for three hundred and sixty dollars and seventy six cents. Oh, let's do that. Or an eight pack. Oh, eight pack, because you know we're gonna have trouble keeping this on the shelves. Yeah, you get that for the for the great value of six hundred and ninety six dollars and thirteen cents. Don't forget the thirteen cents. 
Don't forget how many times you'd have to rent that in order to make all that money back. I can't imagine, dude. How, many, how much were video rentals back then? They were cheap. Like two, three bucks? Yeah. So two, three bucks just to make your 96 bucks back. Crazy. You do the bath, right? You got to rent the thing like about 50, 60 times. From the producers of Lionheart and the directors of Cyborg. Oh. The Jean-Claude Van Damme epic. That sounds that sounds pretty exciting. And if you get you get this, you get us promotional materials, a twelve page brochure. Well that would have been nice. A six page flyer and four a four color theatrical posters. And shelf talkers. What are shelf talkers? Shelf talkers. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I don't know either. But goddamn I'm looking forward to this movie. <laughs> Probably more so than anybody ever did <laughs> the history of that movie. Wow, I've only watched it once. Did you ever watch it? I started it. And if anybody wants to buy my copy, I'm selling it for uh, I'm gonna need at least fifty bucks for it. At least. You couldn't you couldn't do forty five today? I might be able to <laughs> mm. Brian, make a joke about this guy real quick. You know, watching that show makes me think when I'm at Comic Con, there's room to haggle for like that forty dollar comic. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. That if that show has taught us anything, it's there's room to haggle. Yeah. I'm I, sure comic book owners uh, nationwide are like, great. Now these people are coming and haggling with me. Because he loves to haggle. At least that's all the way it looks. Although I just listened to a podcast where apparently he was telling Ming <laughs> that he was just. Uh, Sick of buy he wishes he didn't have to buy things anymore and just could sell them. Yeah. And he was like uh, hiding in the back or something. And then Ming immediately talked about it on one of the podcasts. And I don't know if you listen to these podcasts. I'm a little behind. I think it was a secret stash. Because people will bring in like 15 boxes and then he'll, mm -hmm. he'll have to go through every fucking one of them. Oh, man. And then he only like wants to buy like, you know, one three comics or something so now we just uh yeah zapsic i guess is probably the main guy because i guess the show has probably made people think oh i can mm -hmm. i'm gonna be rich <laughs> they'll buy my stuff they'll buy some of it but they gotta make a profit so now yeah i'm hoping to get that uh marvel treasury edition marvel versus dc for less than forty bucks, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna start haggling. I'm gonna say, hey, you couldn't do ten for that, could you? <laughs> it's like, oh, ten. No, the best I could do is, uh, of course, you don't want to go too low. It's just yeah. gonna piss them off, right? <laughs> I think it'd be two fifty for that. I don't know if you heard. There was like a tell them Steve day where they were at the at the flea market and he saw this old hockey tape and it was like five bucks and he's like. I give you fifty cents, and then and then just pissed her off, and then she wouldn't sell it to him at all. <laughs> he had to go send somebody else back there to buy it, and she's like, "Oh, you're just gonna give it to him?" And he's like, "Yeah," but he paid the, like whatever. He paid two bucks. I don't know. Maybe it's two bucks. Mm. Anyway, he's just yeah talking about Walt Flanagan and the Comic Book Men, or Tell Him Steve Day podcast. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure how many more episodes of the season. We got to be getting close to the end of it, I would think. You would think they haven't really uh, mentioned no when it's going to come to an end. You think they'll pick it up for a third season? Probably. You got any idea what the ratings are on that show? No. I know Sonny got two more seasons. Well, that's good. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Was there like a cliffhanger episode or anything like that? The uh, driving while eating a bowl of cereal. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, that was the end of the season. Pretty much not a cliffhanger. <laughs> and the same thing happens again. They try to reenact the uh, driving while eating cereal. Now, that was a good one. Did we ever talk about uh, eating cereal on the bus on the podcast? Oh, yeah, that's on the early podcast. Okay. How we might spill it on the bus driver <laughs> All inside the thing where you put the change in. <laughs> and then the bus driver's like, just, just go sit down. Just go take a seat. I don't know why I think that's so funny. It's, it's absurd. 
But who would I walk mean, onto the sun tram with a bowl of cereal? Who would eat cereal at a, at a, at a stoplight? <laughs> or better yet, but take everything with you and then pour the milk while they're driving and try and be under, try and be low key about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sit in the back and just eat your fucking cereal. <laughs> See how good that works. I might make a good video. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'll get on the bus several stops ahead of time so I can tape you coming on to the bus. That would be cool. Covert cereal eating on Sun Trent. <laughs> Something to think about maybe for that video podcast that <laughs> Steve-O wants to start. Oh, yeah. He wanted to start a couple of those. And uh, yeah. we got more viewers out there. Sarah posted something on the last one about she's got a sealed copy of comic book diaries. Wow. And nice. one of the original copies of one of those early edits. Cool. We're going to start talking because people talk back to the show. Ray talks back to the show. We got to start yeah. talking back to the talking back. I want to, so. I'm going to call you Sarah. I've been meaning to call you. I've been just really broke and, uh, it's been kind of a rough time. So, yeah, I've been borrowing bus money and whatnot, but I still want to do that podcast with you, so, you know, give me a call. Uh, I'll try and give you a call. I know it's been like uh, spring break was this week, so all the kids were out of school. Yeah, that's what all the craziness was. So I've been kind of, you know, didn't want to mess up the spring break like i went to steve's the other day and i was like walking through the park to go catch the bus when i was leaving and there was like all these mothers and kids in the park and so i just uh focused and walked like straight you know because it's just creepy being in the park when you look like me and there's a bunch of kids around i think it's creepy that's right ray that's right so yeah. that's just in case he said something there and then He's like, wow, exactly this show's right. talking back to me. <laughs> exactly, JJ. Your song kicked ass. I know. Yeah, I know. Maybe did. we'll just keep. I'll, maybe I'll just keep remixing it from time to time. And here's here's another version. And another version. That, that'd be cool. Keep. It's making that intro longer and longer. You know. Like uh, I used to do on my show. Yeah. Then then. The entire podcast is the intro. <laughs> That's when it's time to start a new podcast. That's, yeah. I'm looking forward that to that. That means those. you filled it up. I keep thinking about <laughs> the Big Brother podcast, like how I could just Oh, do, that's getting close. I could do hours and hours on that show. We're going to have plenty to talk about on those. We're going to, we'll probably have to watch some of them together, like the eviction shows mm -hmm. or something. And just be like, sync up the latest episode of Big Brother. We're going to watch it while we do the podcast. I don't know about that. Watching it. Oh, for people watching? Mm hmm. Had got any, uh, you were saying that some of your other uh, associates wanted to start some podcasts. Oh, How's yeah. That? You know, anybody. Uh, and nothing's really gotten going yet, but it just seems like the GMR podcast is the all inclusive podcast podcast anyway so if anybody wants to you know maybe like next week we can like try to call robert or something yeah hold the mic up to the to the telephone probably would work cliff mm -hmm. maybe we could skype or something exactly exactly i'm sure that'll sound horrible but well, still there's probably some way to work it what what would Cliff be doing right now right now it is 6 35 so it's 8 30 there so oh Probably not doing much anything right now. Yeah, not looking for work because it's too late. Yeah, it's too late. I think he was out doing that earlier this morning. And, uh, yeah, probably just chilling. Probably on Xbox or Netflix or something. What's he playing these days, do you know? Well, I did get him addicted to the Marvel pinball. Oh, yeah, yeah, Marvel pinball. Blade, Blade is like uh, the hardest of the one. I don't know. What do you think is the That's hardest the one, one I'm the best at. The is hardest it? one, uh, it's probably Iron Man. Oh, Iron Man, yeah. Because that one, I mean, Spider-Man can be difficult JJ, sometimes. JJ, had, he was like up in the top. JJ's got like 167 million on that Spider-Man. And he, yeah, I think he's in the top on, somewhere in the top of the charts on uh, Iron Man too. Oh. at least he was. They've got a lot more pinball boards now. I know they got a Ghost Rider 
Yeah, someday I'm going to get Xbox they Live have again. Marvel Civil War. They they recently put out some Star Wars ones. I know that. Incredible. You, you got those? The trials, but I never showed them to you because I didn't want you to be like, shit. I don't have I, I read all. about them. I read about so them. So I was just kind of like, oh, why even bother him with the knowledge of that stuff? I seen like a picture of Boba Fett flying over the. Yeah. They got an Empire one, a Boba Fett one, and a Clone Wars one. Pinball FX on Xbox 360 Live. Very addictive. Mind-numbing yeah. game. We do some split screen, but then we figured out the... I forget what it's called, but you, after you lose the ball, you hand the controller to the next person. We were doing that for a while. I love that shit, that Marvel shit. Mm-hmm. It's good. And, yeah, they just picked up the Star Wars, so they're probably going to do nine of them or something like that, I would that, suspect, I yeah. And now there are new movies coming out. That's right. And the they've pro- canceled the Clone Wars. for How many oh, seasons yeah, yeah. did that run? That one, like, five or something? I, I gave up partway through two because yeah, when you th- gave it was up, just getting silly. When you gave up, I think I gave up. It, it might have gotten better, but maybe one day I'll catch up on all that stuff. Yeah, now that it's hopefully... Not, not that they could have round ended it up or wrapped up the storylines because it's Star Wars. Yeah, everybody dies. <laughs> <laughs> I know what happens. Uh, Luke, Luke is no. Wait a minute, that's probably not in those movies. That show, there's no, no Luke. No Luke in the Clone Wars cartoon that I know of. No, it wouldn't make sense. I know Chewbacca shows up supposedly. Is that right? And, and Darth Maul comes back. But. So how old is Chewbacca shows up? Yeah, because he's in that Revenge of the Sith movie. So. Yeah. More spoilers. Revenge of the Sith. That's the that's the last movie. What what was he doing in that movie? I have no. I no remember memory. playing the uh, Star Wars Trivial Pursuit Saga Edition. It had a DVD, and it was before that movie had come out. And we yeah. were playing it, and then the DVD questions were showing us footage from that movie and asking, like, who escaped from Kashyyyk in this pod? And we're like, we don't want to know this. Turn this game off. We had to you know, put the game away for like a month till we saw the movie because we didn't want to know that Yoda escapes from the Wookiee planet. It's too much information. <laughs> I want to just watch the movie. There's a scene on his home planet where there's a bunch of fighting, but I couldn't tell you what which one was was what it was what it was even there for. What was the purpose? I know Yoda and Chewbacca were in a scene, and just just a battle across the just to have Wookies. Yeah, yeah, I could see, but how can you really tell one you know one Wookie from another? Well, they're like Ewoks, you know, they got like different headdress or a, the thing that they're wearing. Is a different color, or they got a feather. Or yeah, yeah. Do you ever play the game Star Wars Battlefront? Oh, no, no. There's like a whole Kashyyyk. Maybe it wasn't, no, maybe it was Knights of the Old Republic mm. where they were on that planet. And you were, yeah, it must have been that because you're, the other one's like a big giant battle game. Yeah. Which, of course, there were Wookiees and there was like a, a Kashyyyk thing to it, but. Yeah, those games are fucking awesome. Those mm-hmm. games are awesome. I want to get into PlayStation 2. I never actually played Star Wars Battlefront 2. Mm. There might even been a third one. I don't know. Cliff got me into this show, 30 Rock. I'd never really watched it before. Yeah. I've watched about the first six or seven, and it's pretty funny. It's over with now, so. I think it, I've, seen it, I've seen some episodes. I think it's funny. It's a good show. And then I got the final season of Weeds, mm. which I haven't watched yet. So. I haven't seen the in between seasons. Uh-huh. Let's see, when did I stop watching that show? They had, uh, I think it was past the point where they were living with uh, Albert Brooks. Oh, okay. So you got, you only need a couple of seasons then to catch up. She was, uh,. I don't know. She was still dealing with the, the Mexican the, drug cartel, oh, dude. And then, uh, or was that's no, that's before the Richard Dreyfus ones, right? Richard Dreyfus. Oh, so you didn't see those yet? Okay, so that's like a used to be. You probably got about three or four years worth to watch. It gets completely insane, but I would expect nothing less from a show called Weeds. So, 
<laughs> I'm also way behind on Breaking Bad. That's one of my favorite I'm so shows. far behind on that, I haven't watched one episode. Because I know uh, that I would... Just, well, here's another thing i got to watch. Just like I won't watch Walking Dead. Because I know here's another thing I'm going to have to watch every week. I'm going to get all hooked into it. Apparently there's going to be a Breaking Bad movie. So Is that right? Mm-hmm. I heard that somebody had stolen the script for it, but they got it back. I was thinking about... Uh, I wish I I could be a hermit. Just live in a hole. Wouldn't that be neat? Well, there was a time where it felt like you did there for a while when that place off on Prince. Yeah. Because it was all like you had to... I felt like we were hobbits, you know. We had to bend down oh, yeah. to get into the place. I loved that place, dude. And you're all in there like Gandalf and shit. I love that place. <laughs> I used to play so many video games back then. You think I should watch Madagascar? You know, it's funny because Sasha Baron Cohen is one of the voices is that in that right? movie. It, I thought it was really aimed at the young young folks. Well, obviously. But, you know, some of those, like the first Shrek, the, you know, I think adults can enjoy it as much as the kids. You get the Shrek 2, and it's just like, this is just this is dumbed down. But, you know, people love Madagascar. There's three of those I movies. I know. That's what, what I'm saying. I think the I, Penguins have spinoffs. So may, maybe it's worth a second I look. I see it. Like, I, I watch you a lot of There's a character named Marty in it. I watch a lot of old uh, wrestling videotapes, and I see all these weird commercials ah. for shit, like uh, live action Thunderbirds. Maybe I saw that on. Oh yes, with maybe Bill I saw Paxton. that on a on a DV, on a tape, not a DVD, like a preview. That was from about '05. Yeah, something like that. How was that? Oh, I never saw. Well, that. I must have seen that on a wrestling commercial. Who knows? It looked interesting though. Live action Thunderbirds. I think Ben Kingsley's in that movie also. Gandhi. I think people who listen to this podcast should listen to more No Means No. Starting with nobody, and then one fine day. There you go. Yes. Try those two songs out. See if you like them. And then if you do, post something on uh, where the heck you post things. Where do they mm -hmm. post things, Marty? Oh, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Where did, where did the Sarah give you that post? That's right on to YouTube, because mm. you can leave comments for the podcast, and so far, a couple people have. I have to check those out. It's good to have feedback. Like the only It is. It makes you realize, oh, people listen, so yeah, let's yeah. keep doing it. And that's good, because, uh, I don't know, I guess if, if we were still up to like three or four l listeners, I don't know that... I'd be that excited about it. Yeah, I, I like doing this because it gives me, it's, it's like doing the old days we used to do TV yeah, exactly. every week. I mean, it's something to do. Mm -hmm. It's better than what I'd rather be doing than sitting at home uh, doing nothing, trying to find old, what should I watch? Jurassic Park. See, now it makes it, now I'm watching Jurassic Park for a reason. Yeah. Instead of just, I'm fucking bored. <laughs> right? Because if I'm fucking bored, I never think, hey, let's watch Jurassic Park. I don't want to. I've seen Jurassic Park. But you know what? It's it's a pretty good movie. On VHS, the way it's meant to be seen. Exactly. Because these discs today, one little thing happens. Like like that a couple weeks ago, you uh, oh, last yeah. month you lost control of, uh, you picked up oh, your disc. by the You picked it up by the top of the case instead of by the base. And then they all just went flipping everywhere, like a hundred. Hundred disc spindle went everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Oh, that was awful. And now those discs are fucked. And now you have to. Yeah, the, I had to redo a where's bunch the, of them. Uh, Took me about a week to restore all that back to normal. Ugh. Whereas a video cassette, you know, you, you no matter how fucked it is, it's probably still going to play, especially like that. 20 year old, probably not 20 years old, because I don't know when they put out the DVD for Jurassic Park. But you got to imagine it's probably at least 15 About years 15 old. 15 by now, and it, yeah. And it looks flawless. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it, it's not been stored well. It still looks flawless. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. I'm never going to give up my my uh, VCR because I've got way too many videotapes. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and unless I could just make them all on a digital computer file. That's what I'm working on. Where I would never have to touch them again. It doesn't seem like it would be that... Uh, Oh, that would be the way to go. Yeah. Because then I could just look and be, okay, I watched this one last year, and I'd know when the hell. 
because I'm rewatching. Yeah, a lot of times I'm just picking up the same tape and rewatching it, and it's, it's like I don't. My memory is not exactly. Like uh, I brought Marty a copy of a. Uh, one of the few copies of my instant access, my random access show, some little bit of the footage I have, and like the first two hour, two and a half hours of it, or four uh, and a half, first four and a half hours of it, or nineteen ninety eight wrestling, yeah, which uh, apparently this is a tape JJ had gave me, so apparently he didn't realize there was random access on it. And he was just trying to get that wrestling because that was the Bret Hart days. There was like a great interview with Bret Hart and Ric Flair. And, you know, fucking had Chris Jericho at a, you know, it was just, just a great, great fucking tape. The Rock was, uh, everybody was in their prime back then. So no no real new band info that I, information mm. I can talk about. But well, we'll fill you in on that next week. Uh, maybe. Okay. And here we go.